Now let's look at fractions where we have to borrow before we can subtract. But first, let me review the concept of borrowing with whole numbers so you can understand this concept better. First of all, if you have a regular subtraction problem like this, 68 minus 20, in the first column you can subtract nothing from something, but in this problem you cannot subtract something from nothing. You know that you have to borrow from the 6 to add it to the 0 to make it 10 so that you can subtract the 8 from 10, then you subtract 2 from 5. Now if we had this fraction subtraction problem, we can subtract nothing from the fraction part and it will leave the fraction part. When you subtract nothing from 4 ninths, you get 4 ninths. And 8 from 12 leaves 4. But if we have this problem, we cannot subtract something from nothing. So we have to borrow 1 from the 12 and place it above the fraction so that we have something to subtract from. The problem here is that you can only subtract fraction numbers from fraction numbers. Well, 1 is not a fraction. That's right. Let me ask you a question. How many different ways can you write the number 1? Is this another one of them trick questions? Not really. Let me explain. What is 7 over 7 equal to? It's equal to 1. What are numbers like 21 over 21, or 231 over 231, or 84,934 over 84,934 equal to? Those are all equal to 1 also. So let me ask you again, how many different ways can you write the number 1? An infinite number of ways is a fraction, so long as you keep the top of the fraction the same as the bottom of the fraction. That's right. Now let's go back to the problem where we borrowed a 1 from the 12. We have to turn this 1 into a fraction before we can subtract the 4 ninths from it. Remember, we can turn it into any number we want to, but what would be a good choice to turn this number into? Well, the bottoms have to be the same before we can subtract. So it would be nice if the bottom of it was 9 also. Yes, that's correct so far. Now what does the top have to be? in order to make sure it remains 1. It has to be 9 also to keep it the same as 1. Yes, we rewrite the number 1 as a fraction 9 ninths. Now we can subtract 4 from 9 to get 5 ninths. And the whole number is 8 from 11 which leaves 3. Let's take another problem. 15 minus 8 and 11 sixteenths. You notice here that you can't subtract the fraction part from nothing. So what do we do first, Irving? You have to borrow 1 from the 15 and it now becomes 14. Next, you have to rewrite the 1 as a fraction because the denominator of the lower fraction is 16. We rewrite that number 1 as a fraction 16 over 16. Now we can subtract 11 from 16 and get 5 sixteenths. And 8 from 14 is 6 for the whole number. Very good. Now how would you handle this subtraction problem, Bruno? That looks a little strange, Mr. Cox. Maybe it does, but just follow the rules we described for the other subtraction problems. Okay, you borrow 1 from the 12, which now makes that 11. And you must turn that 1 into a fraction. Because the denominator of the fraction we are subtracting is 3, we change that 1 into 3 over 3. Now we can subtract 2 thirds from 3 thirds, which is 1 third, and nothing from 11 leaves 11. Now let's look at two slightly different fraction problems before we move on to multiplication. We want to take 11 and 1 fifth and subtract 4 and 2 fifths from it. What's the first problem here, Irving? You can't subtract 2 from 1. That's right. The fraction 1 fifth is smaller than 2 fifths, so we can't perform that arithmetic. That means we'll have to borrow 1 from the 11 and somehow add it to the 1 fifth to make it larger. Since we have to change that 1 to a fraction to add it to 1 fifth, what would you change it to? Well, because the bottom of the fraction we want to add it to is 5, we should change the 1 to 5 fifths to be able to add them together. Correct. Now what? Now we have 6 fifths, so we can subtract 2 from 6, which leaves 4 fifths and 4 from 10 leaves 6. So our answer is 6 and 4 fifths.